Well, hello there! And as I always say, and it's time to say it again, <laughs> it's that time again. It's time for that blog that truly blazes. That's right. We have one blazing of a blog today. Let's go ahead and get started. But first, I want to introduce my co host, Hi. Marissa Cohen. She's my astrologer friend. She's also an excellent writer, editor, into all kinds of things, metaphysical and non-metaphysical. <laughs> it has a lot to offer our blog. So let's go ahead and get started. The first card is the last card of the previous week's reading. And that last card was adjustment, justice, attributed to Libra, finding balance, finding wholeness, finding that things are working out fairly for us after the dramas that we've gone through. It's tying ends together. It's getting thing, everything on an even keel. And we deserve to have that because we were putting in a lot of work towards getting things put together again the way that we wanted them. Mm -hmm. Right, Marissa? Absolutely. And anything in Libra, I will tie absolutely right back to um, our Saturn in Libra, which I've mentioned before on the show which is going to bring about lessons in relationships and balance. And we're there until about uh, mid-2012. So we're going to be, so we're still in that energy. Hmm. And we're coming into some good stuff now. The card for the now, the card we're going to be coming into here as this week's progressing, is art. Represented as Sagittarius. Alchemy. Taking lead. Taking negativity. And making it into gold. Now, if you got a way to make real lead into real gold, please let me know. <laughs> but we'll be happy and satisfied in the meantime to take our spiritual lead, our negativity, our yucky feelings, our fears, our inhibitions, our limitations, and take those and transmute them into higher energy. That's the true nature of alchemy. And, of course, the nature of Sagittarius, okay, or this card is also known as temperance, okay, the nature of temperance, uh, art, Sagittarius, is bold exploration. Ruled by Jupiter, it wishes to go where it has not gone before. So we're going to find things opening up for us. We're going to find ourselves going and taking it up to another plane. We hit equilibrium with Libra. Now it's time to take it up a notch and go on up to the next level. Right, Marissa? Well, what's interesting about about um, the Jupiter connection in Sagittarius is that's trine, which means it agrees with or it's supportive of new energy that we're coming into. Next week we're going into um, Sun in Aries, we have Uranus in Aries, we have Jupiter in Aries right now, which is luck. We have a lot of very positive Aries energy that's that we've been in and that's slowly starting to come our way. So I think as far as creative ventures, that's really going to support um, that, that, that card and that idea. Yeah. Yay. Yes, very good. Very good. And we're coming into even better energy. Towards the end of this week, we're going to be coming into the Six of Cups. Now, the Six of Cups is entitled Pleasure. And it's a very mellow card. It's a very satisfying energy. It's basically the sun in Scorpio. So you have the warming, fructifying, loving power of the sun illuminating the darkness of Scorpio, illuminating the darkness within. Mm -hmm. And of course six is to our solar in nature, in the Kabbalah. So this is going to be like a solar balancing of our emotions, of our spirit, and of our sense of life's flow. Very satisfying, very pleasing, sort of a thing to have. And what we're going to just feel, I think, is we're going to feel like, okay, we got our equilibrium back, we got ourselves rebounced again on a higher plane, and now time, it's time to let things flow from a higher source. That's kind of like what it feels like to me. And what's interesting with the Scorpio energy, and I'm going to use the Scorpio thing to sort of jump into something else that's big. Okay, do that. Th that, that we have going on tomorrow night. Scorpio energy is um, sextile, which means it's buddies, doesn't totally agree with, but it's good buddies. Um, with Virgo energy. Tomorrow we have the full moon in Virgo, which means that we're closing out manifestation. At the beginning of the month with the new moon in Pisces, we sort of opened the door to the month of Pisces and we were manifesting things to do with spirituality, compassion, and dreams. With the full moon, it's bringing to bear how well we can apply 
those concepts into our life. Mm. So with a full moon in Virgo, it's going to basically be asking how much we can take those principles of compassion and spirituality and use Virgo, full moon, to bring it about. So how well can you take your spirituality in a practical light? How well can you manifest your dreams of being compassionate and a healer in a very hard-nosed, detailed way? So it's taking Pisces dreams and manifesting them um, with a, a ver sort of a Virgo skin or cloak on it. And what's interesting about the supermoon is um, also it's the first time in 18 years it's called, a, uh, it's called a lunar apogee. It's the first time in 18 years that the moon has been this close to the Earth. Some astrologers feel that um, it's actually partially responsible for things like earthquakes in a two-week period previous to it, which would encompass the disaster in Japan, which I thought was very interesting. Um, but so it's, it's a very, very interesting, powerful time, and we can harness that super moon, full moon energy by getting practical about our spiritual pursuits. And if you know your chart, wherever in your chart you have a Pisces, uh, your Pisces and your Virgo axis or planet is where you will have felt that for the last two weeks and where you'll feel it tomorrow and the lessons that you're meant to learn this month. Well, that's good. That's very powerful. Very, very powerful, yeah. Very, very powerful. It's positive. There, it is very positive. And it's just about any time you have a full moon, it's just about manifesting your dreams and figuring out um, using the energy of the full moon to do it. So it's, it's, it's um, just moving ahead. It's great stuff. It is great stuff. And speaking of great stuff, if they want to get in touch with you and get one of those readings or get some editing work done. Um, you can find me at happyganesh.com. You can also find Happy Ganesh on Facebook or Twitter. Um, I've been doing a little Uranus and Aries campaign where every day I've put up how it would affect your sun sign or your ascendant. Mm -hmm. um, so you can log in, you can uh, find Happy Ganesh on Twitter for that. You can also go to Happy Ganesh on Facebook for that. And once the mini campaign is done, you'll be able to see it on happyganesh.com. Um, also, this morning I posted a much, much bigger, in detailed, ver in detailed version of um, the super moon, uh, full moon, and Virgo information and what it means. So you would also log on to happyganesh.com for that as well. Very good. Very good. Well, this all sounds like happy stuff. Good stuff. And speaking of happy stuff, if you want to get in touch with me, <laughs> have a happy time with a reading or a hypnosis session, uh, please go to my website, www.bobdecker.net. And that's going to be on the end titles and credits of the video, as it always is. Well, listen, friends, we love you. We appreciate you. We thank you so much for tuning into the blog that truly blazes. And until we meet you again next week, many, many blessings.